Thank you very much for coming. Um, my name is Helen Eastman. I'm the Artistic Associate of the Archive for Performance of Greek and Roman Drama at Oxford University. Recently, I spent a few months uh, over at Cambridge University uh, directing a production of two ancient Greek plays in the original Greek. And it's a fairly fair question to ask, why would you do that? Those plays were written in the 5th century BC, which means they're over 2,000 years old. Um, yet Greek tragedy and Greek comedy are regularly produced as part of our theatrical canon. Apart from Shakespeare's corpus, they're the most produced plays at theatres in the UK. But generally they're produced in translations. Sometimes these are prose translations, sometimes verse translations by very well-known poets. But it's quite unusual to produce these texts in the original because, although there are many lovers and readers of ancient Greek tragedy, it's not a language we learn orally when we learn it either at school or at college. So there really aren't people who can follow the text orally. So why did I find myself directing two plays in what is essentially a dead language? Um, it was a question I asked when I was first asked to do it because for me it wasn't enough to agree to direct the plays simply out of curiosity or academic curiosity. There had to be a really good reason for doing the plays in ancient Greek for a modern audience in what is Cambridge's largest theatre in its town. It was going to be on for eight performances. They were expected to be packed out. Uh, how were we going to make that an exciting and valid theatrical experience? One answer to that question might be that it's about reconstruction or it's about authenticity and what we can understand about those plays producing them in the way they were originally produced. Now there's a lot we can learn through attempts at reconstruction and attempts at authenticity about how the plays might have been produced and we can find out more about the plays in themselves in investigating them in that way. Um, a parallel project, such as the original practice project at the Globe over the last 10 years, has thrown up similarly illuminating facts about Shakespeare by performing it in its original way. But to do that, the Globe built a specially reconstructed version of the Globe, which was open air, like the original space, where people were standing, like the original space. And these performances were going to be at the Cambridge Arts Theatre, which is an end-on proscenium arch, indoor, dark theatre. The circumstances weren't going to be like anything like the original circumstances of a 5th century uh, Greek tragedy. For starters, there were going to be a very mixed audience of men and women. It wasn't going to be part of a religious festival. It wasn't going to be part in, during the day. It wasn't going to be open air. It wasn't going to be a 3,000 seat auditorium. So to me, the idea of trying to use that as a forum to explore authenticity seemed completely pointless in that it wasn't going to be in any way an authentic experience. So that couldn't be the reason for doing it. So what could the reason be for putting these plays on in the original language? For me, it was all about sound, and ancient Greek texts have the most extraordinary rhythms and metres to them. The writers wrote in lyric verses, particularly the choruses, and used a whole range of metres. We don't see writing like that again ever for the stage. By the time we come to uh, Roman drama, the rhythms have become much more regular, and by the time we come to our own verse dramas, we're using regular metres such as pentameter. But the Greeks used a whole range of lyric metres, and those metres would reflect the emotional content of the scene. And they're incredibly powerful to perform for actors. There's a visceral, guttural sense of what a scene is about emotionally when you lock into the rhythm and the language. So for me, that was the opportunity that was there, to let people hear these plays and hear the incredible oral quality that they had in their original performance language. I wanted to start working with Alex Silverman, who's a composer who, uh, like me, has spent um, 10 years working in the theatre industry, but with a classics background prior to that. And as two complete metre geeks, we wanted to spend a lot of time looking at the rhythms of the original language and how we might reflect that in a modern scoring of the production. Here's an example. This clip is taken from the end of Prometheus, which is one of the plays we produced last year in 2013. And in it, I think you can hear some of the power of the rhythm and the language as Prometheus meets his final moments. Uh, he's been chained to a rock for nearly an hour and a half of stage time, and this is his final singing to the heavens as they rain down upon them.
fantastic. Um, and that was an extraordinary performance by a 19-year-old student, Henry Jenkinson, performing the part of Prometheus there. And that's another really important reason. There's an incredible pedagogic value in exploring these texts in their original language and their sound, and exploring that not conceptually or theoretically or intellectually, but actually from learning those texts and performing them and feeling that rhythm in the body and what it must have been like to perform them. And it's an opportunity that can be offered not just to classic students. Most of the class weren't classicists and learned the language in lots of different ways from scratch. Uh, and that kind of uh, incredible building an ensemble over time with uh, the brilliant talent and uh, brilliant young minds of lots of enthusiastic students was an incredible experience. Um, this tradition at Cambridge of doing the play every three years in ancient Greek has been going on for about 150 years. Uh, and it was a real honour to be part of it. But for the last 25 years or so, it's always been a tragedy. And I rather controversially asked this time if we could do a double bill of a tragedy and a comedy. Um, and I was told quite simply that it couldn't be a comedy because it wouldn't be funny. Uh, and I took issue with this and disputed the fact that it was possible to be funny across a language barrier. Personally, I've seen things in other languages, physical comedy, clowning, things with no language, uh, operas in different languages that I found hilariously funny. Um, and I was determined that it would be possible to do a comic Aristophanic play from the 5th century uh, with surtitles and for it to still be funny. And I understood the fear. The fear is that it will be completely unfunny and utterly excruciating to watch. Uh, but I have far too much respect and love for Aristophanes to ever do that. But it was an incredible journey in terms of trying to find ways into the humour, particularly with a 5th um, century comedies are really political. There's loads of satire. And with a really diverse audience, it's very difficult to find things that everyone might laugh at, political jokes everyone might get. If you want to lampoon a song, songs everyone in the audience might have heard. And it was a huge voyage to pack in as many different types of comedy as we could. The final production ended up full of slapstick, uh, visual comedy, silly songs, huge dance numbers, even a song sheet in ancient Greek, which I was particularly proud of. Um, and it was, if anything, a more challenging journey than the tragedy, to try and find a way to make sure that from minute to minute we created something of the atmosphere of Aristophanes' carnivalesque, uh, politically reckless, uh, absolutely fantastical comedy. Um, those two productions, uh, you can now uh, watch them on film if there's something that you're interested in seeing. They've been uh, kept and archived. And I hope they're the beginning of an ongoing journey for myself and Alex in continuing to explore these texts and the sound of them uh, over the next few years. Thank you.